introducing Dehi Patkai. Well, we all know that Dehi Patkai is the only wet evergreen forest of of the state of in the state of Assam. It, it has a rich biodiversity and a luxurious ecosystem with about hundreds of species of flora and fauna, which makes it a paradise for bird watchers. Apart from it, it hosts a dozen different ethnic groups, including some indigenous Assamese communities. So let us start by introducing our speakers for the evening. First up, we have Deborshi Gogoi, who is a wildlife cartoonist. He will be talking about the history of the area. Sir has been a cartoonist for the past 20 years and a wildlife cartoonist for the past eight years. Then we have Dr. Ranjan Kumar Das. He is the associate professor in the Department of Geography in Tinsukia College in Assam. He specializes in biogeography and he will be talking about the geography of the region and the biodiversity as well. The, the third speaker is Trinayan Gogol. He is the founder of the Green Bird Society and a wildlife activist himself. Well, now I would like to call upon Devorshi Gogol sir to start the evening by introducing us with Dehing Patkar. Sir, you may proceed. Thank you, Hedvina. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Devorshi Gogol. Organizing this webinar on time. Um, as uh, we already know, that uh, the Patka is the last uh, remaining patch of lowland tropical evergreen forest of Assam. And like many other uh, forests of this kind, the Patka is also facing the threat of extinction due to human activities. Lately, many people uh, they are raising their voice against the MBWL's permission to uh, allow open cast mining in the Patka. But the problem is that many people are still. Uh, uh, confuse and uh, have confusions about the uh, what and where the Patka is. Basically, today what I will be trying to do is trying to make people understand where the uh, Patka is, and I also like to throw light on the historical aspect of uh, this particular landscape. And in doing so, first of all, uh, let us go back to 1228 AD when the prince of uh, Mongri Mongram. Saulung Sukafa, who is also the first king of Ahum uh, uh, dynasty, he came to this part of the uh, this part of Assam from uh, Yunnan's uh, Yunnan province of China. Let me share with you one map. I think that will be helpful. Hadrina, uh, you have to give me the permission to share the image. Yeah. Uh, can you can you view it, sir? Oh, yes. Google Drive box. Photos. Okay. Uh, let me share with you this image. If you look at this image, then you can find. Uh, Yes. Yeah, let me use the pin. Yeah, actually, this is the Yunnan province, and fr from where Sukafa started his journey in 1225, uh, 1215 AD, and he came to this part of the country. It took him 13 years to reach the Indo Burma border. Let me share with you another, another image. Okay. After uh, 13 years of journey, he and his uh, army men reached this portion. This is the Nangyang Lake. And today we call it as Lake of No Return. Uh, this particular lake uh, has a number of legends associated with uh, it, especially during the World War II. And many people believe that those who ever sailed this uh, lake, they don't uh, return back. That's why the name of this lake is Lake of No Return. And this is, if you can see, this is the uh, famous uh, Steelwell Road that was constructed during the World War II. And this is the entry point to India from Burma side. Okay. Uh, uh, 
Now, Sukafa, he reads here in 1228. Uh, this is the Pangsu Pass. This is the Pangsu Pass area. And from here, from here, he went to Nampong. This is the Nampong area. And there he stayed for a few months. And there they, uh, he, he and his army uh, built the wooden boats and they took the uh, river route and they reached Namloop. Okay, from Namloop they went to Tipam. In Tipam they stayed there for uh, uh, a few months. Again, then they moved to Soraideo where he established his kingdom. And during that time, what he did, he started to ex uh, expand his uh, kingdom uh, throughout the uh, Langton Great of Assam. And in doing so, he had to fight a, fight with a number of rulers uh, who were ruling different parts of Assam. And one such ruler who was ruling this present Pakkai was a Naga king. Uh, and uh, the Ahom army as well as the uh, our uh, uh, Naga, Naga army, they fought with each other. And after fighting for many days, they decided to enter into an agreement. And uh, that agreement was done in a uh, Ahum tradition way, where the, uh, a chicken was sacrificed to uh, arrive at a treaty. And from this, actually, this Patkai name came. Because in Thai language, Pat is to cut and Kai is means chicken. And from here, the name, the entire region came to be known as Patkai. Uh, then we know that um, uh, after Sukafa and his descendants ruled uh, Assam for another 600 years. And, but uh, the darkest hour of the Ahum dynasty was in 1817 to 1825. Because of internal conflict and because of poor leadership, the Burmese attacked uh, the uh, Ahum kingdom. And as a result of which, uh, during 1821 to 1825, they took over the uh, uh, control of Assam. But two important events took place during this time. Uh, the first one was in uh, during 1823, when the when Robert Bruce, a high official from the uh, British East India Company, he came near Margarita, and in uh, Bisagam, who was the king of Singapore. There he found out that they are uh, having a, traditionally they are having a medicinal drink which was made up of tea. It was known as fanap. This was a, a very important discovery during that time because uh, tea was having a international demand during that time and uh, China was the only producer of tea. Uh, the Another important inc incident took place in the year 1825 when a lieutenant named Wilcock, uh, sorry, uh, his name was uh, Wilcock, who discovered uh, coal uh, in the Borhat area, which is near Namlu. These are two important uh, uh, events that took place during this period that attracted the Britishers uh, uh, towards Assam. Then, uh, what happened is that, um, uh, as, as I have already told that in during 1821 and 1825, the entire Assam control was under the, uh, went under the Bar Burmese rule. And so the king of Ahom, he approached the Britishers to help him to throw out the Burmese from Assam. And Britishers do, uh, did that and they fought with the Burmese and they threw them away from Assam. But they entered into an agreement that is known as Yandabu Treaty in 1826. And after that, entire Assam went into the control of the Britishers. Okay. Then again, in 1837, the Britishers started a commercial tea plantation in Sabua. Sabua is a place near Tinisukia and Dibuga. It is in between Tinisukia and Dibuga. Their first uh, commercial plantation of tea took place. And during that, this time, the for the first time might be the entire uh, forest area, which was actually spread from uh, Tinisukia from this area to until Golaghat, probably for the first time a big portion was uh, chopped off for commercial purposes. Uh, it was in 1837. 
then what happened uh, then again there was a uh, survey that took place in uh, 1864 uh, 65 that was a ge geological survey and that was done basically to identify the mineral resources of upper assam then another important uh, date is that the uh, another important date uh, is uh, in the year 18 uh, sorry uh 1874 okay oh sorry for in in the year 1876 when mr millet he identified two huge coal reserves uh, in uh, upper assam one was in jaipur area and the other one was in makum area and according to him the makum reserve was around 18 million ton that was a huge reserve of coal uh Uh, it is now presently located near the dihipatta region okay that was another important uh, event then in a, during the same period what the britishers did they established the uh, forest department of uh, assam and the entire forest scape which was which once belongs to the local people now went in the hands of the britishers okay the britishers now had control over the entire forest scape of assam forest resources of assam now uh, here it is worth mentioning that in 1881 again oil was discovered in dipoi that was another important resources uh, and uh, we all know that dipoi uh, is presently having the uh, first uh, oil refinery in asia it is and also it is also the oldest running refinery now what the britishers did the britishers uh, classified the forest of assam broadly into three uh, categories the first one was reserve forest the second one was uh, protected forest and the third one was village forest if you go through the uh, you know uh, characteristic of uh, reserve forest then you can find out that reserve forest were basically owned by the government and they uh, kept uh, this forest to serve their developmental objectives and the second category of forest uh, the uh, the protect uh, that, that is protected forest were those forest uh, which uh, were actually eligible for uh, uh, this one uh, reserve forest uh, category uh, in a future date and this uh, protected forest were basically comprised of uh, very uh, high value uh, timber and the third category of forest was the forest basically for their livelihood uh, purpose there are three classifications that were made by the britishers uh, and the criteria was basically uh, means the criteria upon which a uh, forest was categorized was basically dependent on the amount of revenue that it could generate okay if the forest man uh, generation of revenue was more in case of a in case of uh, forest product then in that case it was that particular forest uh, forest was categorized as protected forest and if you see uh, the revenue from coal oil or from tea it was more than they kept it as reserve forest and uh, this was the criteria under which actually they categorized the, the forest and this is one of the reason why tinisuke and dibruga district which are uh, probably one of the most resourceful districts of assam they had this many number of uh, reserve forest but in the post independence era also we can see that uh, the, the perspective of the government didn't change because when the proposal uh, for a uh, wildlife sanctuary in dihingpatkai uh, rainforest was uh, proposed for 500 plus hectares it was only only 111.19 square kilometers were allotted uh, for the wildlife sanctuary the rest were kept Uh, as reserve forest so that the government can use this forest for extracting minerals and other uh, for other purposes by diverting the forest scape this was the main motive for which we have this many numbers of uh, reserve forest in this part of the country now i like to share with you another um, image that will help you identify uh, how how many reserve forest are there in under dihing patkai this is a uh, illustration that i made actually this is the entire dihing patkai rainforest area 
it covers an area of around 917 square kilometer 917 square kilometer and if we can uh, see in this map uh, broadly we can categorize this entire rainforest into five uh, complexes the first one is upper dehing west complex the second one is upper dehing east complex then there is dumduma dangori kumsang rain for uh, reserve forest then again we have tira buri dehing uh, that part and we have namsang mukh and borduria these are the five broad classification of dehing patkai rainforest and this coal mining activities are basically taking place in the tirap and buri dehing uh, complexes because here if you see the saleki comes somewhere near uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this area uh, this is the area where saleki and other coal mining activities are taking place uh, this is what i have to say uh, now uh, i would request other guests other speakers to uh, throw light on this uh, aspect thank you thank you so much deborshi sir i would call upon ranjan kumar sir to speak further on the topic yeah okay mm-hmm. hello everybody um i want to thank deborshi kumar because he has explained it very clear uh, nicely you know regarding the history of this area, history of this uh, you know diverse uh, landscape it's a forest landscape it's a resource landscape and it's very important as well as and i'll talk about uh, you know the biogeography of this area this is very important because if you see the indian wildlife as a whole there are two route very important and an empty route very one is the western route another one is the eastern route and the eastern route is the pakkai range you know that that pansu pass and all because uh, as you have seen that means google means you see that it is all surrounded by himalaya only in this pakkai range the altitude is uh, quite low and that is very uh, that has a very diverse forest you know very rich forest with very important prey days all the wildlife in the and Actually, this area, this forest, uh, might have formed uh, right from now. After the formation of Himalaya, actually, it is almost, almost at least 35 million years old. You know, and it's a climax forest. You know the succession. You know the succession of a forest. So this is the ultimate stage. You know the forest we have in the Himalayan area, the Himalayan reserve forest or elephant reserve forest, whatever you say. it is a very you know dense and diverse and lowland tropical uh, rainforest lowland basically it's just below the you know patkai range patkai is a hill actually it is not a mountain and it starts from the uh, right from the east of the easternmost point is the design agree you know it is uh, the easternmost point of the namdapan national park also right from there it comes up to the namrup area joypur area and all right so that that is a dense forest fields right yes, basically we are talking about the wildlife of india whatever the species we found we have two uh, type of species in india while as a whole it may be bird or it may be mammals also cats so one is the uh, the western route was the ethiopian uh, species they uh, it, uh they took the western route you know ethiopian means the african side you know that side western side and here the all the indo chinese and indo malayan species came over here and most of the white uh, wildlife is formed by the indo chinese and indo malayan because we are in the oriental region right in the oriental region indo chinese and indo malayan species both plants and animals whatever may be reptiles or cats uh it, they are all basically either indo chinese or indo malayan so this is the you know the get it is about the rain for it is all the tropical moisture will be for this is known as the gateway for eastern gateway for the indian wildlife so now as you have uh, come to know from the debosis uh, perspective you know that this area was under british rule and they had their own policies even after the independence of india 
the policy policies remain the same almost. That's why you know because it was full of resources, and all the area was declared as reserve forest uh, due to the extraction of uh, due, to the, due to the collection of the uh, resources. You know, and that's why most probably in Assam, not only in Assam, we have the highest number of reserve forests in Tinsukan River District. And now let us come to the another point that is very important. So how they are protected. The forest or whatever it may be, wetland, right? They are all protected under the uh, Wildlife Protection Act, 1972. Um, after 1972, we have a very strong Wildlife Protection Act. You know? So they have their different, uh, they, this, uh, under this act, there are some different categories. The first is the the initial, the initial category, we can say the proposed reserve forest. That's why you know the proposed reserve forest, the Saleki comes under the uh, purview of proposed reserve forest. They have, that area is not under the Wildlife Protection Act or even the, not under the forest department, that is under the district authority, deputy commissioner actually, or district magistrate, you, uh, you can say also, right? The next is the reserve forest. Reserve forest means it, it, it is all made by the British rules, you know, the British period, you know, they are the reserve forest. They, they are also the Wildlife Protection Act actually do not have very strong, you know, uh, uh, implication of law. Next category that, that, that is important, Wildlife Sanctuary. Wildlife Sanctuary is important. It comes under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, okay? Each and every species is and every tree, uh, they are under the protection of Wildlife Protection Act. And above that, the national park, then came the, you know, uh, the tiger reserve or elephant reserve, then biosphere reserve, then eco-sensitive zone, we sent it. So here it is very interesting. And there, the Himpatkai, uh, rainforest area, they have almost all the categories except the national park and biosphere reserve. They have almost all the categories. Saliki is the proposed reserve forest, right? Then the, the only 111.19 square kilometer is wildlife sanctuary, right? And uh, around that wildlife sanctuary, that is uh, a eco sensitive zone which goes up to 10 kilometers. And, Sal and that is interesting. Saliki, again, Saliki is, you know, it is uh, not even the 10 kilometer from the uh, wildlife sanctuary boundary. It is only 9.1 kilometer. That means the Saliki is within the eco sensitive zone. That is also very important, the um, law wise or the. And at top, of, uh, top of that, and the area is again known as Elephant Reserve. Right, so we have elephant reserve, right? Then the wildlife sanctuary, then the reserve forest, then the eco sensitive zone of the Impatkai wildlife sanctuaries. So, if you say, or if you see that the entire area is that very vital, very important. Now, what is the most important thing is that if it all uh, in, in the name of the development or in the name of the collection of the mineral resources, oil, or the, in the name of the plantation of tea, tea plantation, right? If we destroy all and there is, you know, area, then there will be a very huge threat for the Indian wildlife also because this species is still used as the wildlife dispersal. From this area, the, the uh, whatever it may be, mammals or or the cat families, or the birds, you know. There are some birds which are very unique in this area, right? That is one bird is there, you know, it is found only in the Myanmar region. That is only found only in the oil field and the Patkai hills, in the Patkai range, uh, in the Sarai Bung and all. So that bird is just not like laughing trust. So all the species, even the plant species, their dispersal starts from here, you know. Most of the plant species 
endemic plant species or important plant species that, that dispersal was right from this region. And beyond that, you know, the, this, uh, this is Onasal is there. And if you go further east, you get the Myanmar. It is all continuous forest area. Uh, Onasal is more or less safe because they are included in the tribal belt, six to do. So no developmental activities actually takes place as we have seen in our area. So that is more or less protected, though the deforestation is going on, that is more or less protected. But here it is diversity. The forest cover, there are illegal tree felling going on, there are illegal mining going on, there are, there are Ill illegal, you know, and this important is on the, I mean, very important for the rivers and tributaries also. Sand collection, gravel collection. So in every aspect and, you know, unfriced tea plantation also. Encroachment of the tea plantation in the reserve forest area also. So, landscape, you know. So lately, now, as you have, uh, as we have already know that the uh, National Board for Wildlife, they have declared, they have almost passed the bill, you know, that this area should be, especially the Saleki. Right from the Saleki, they will phase by phase. And uh, I think they will cover the entire area. And entire this area is very rich in coal. You know, entire this area is. And this is the, that this coal is very important because this is the place, uh, tertiary coal field. Rich in sulfur, right? Very rich in carbon. And that's why. And they are almost at the upper, uppermost layer. You know, if you see geologically, they are almost in the uppermost layer. Just below the forest, there is coal. So there is a tremendous trade on the forest. Habitat because open cast mining is the very simple solution for both uh, coal India as well as other illegal activities. So, this is the present situation going on. So, you know, the biogeographically that I have already told you, this is most important. Wildlife wise, very important. Biodiversity wise, very important. This is one of the biodiversity hotspots of the world also. The most important, you know, if you include the Myanmar, right from the Indonesian Malaysian island, it's a very important area. So here we have uh, seven species of cats, five species of hornbill, more than 350 species of birds, more than 250 species of orchids, butterfly, right? And so on. And the least is, you know, such that even some uh, yet, uh, there are some uh, spaces or there, are, there may be some organism living or living which is yet to be discovered, right? Yet to be scientifically explained. So before doing that, you know, the forest cover is we are losing the entire habitat in a very rapid rate, okay? That's what I'm just now telling you in front of all of you. So I hope we'll continue the discussion with the other participants. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ranjan Kumar, sir. So I would like to call upon the third speaker for the evening, uh, Trinan Gogoi, and he would speak about the illegal activities going on in the region. Trinan Gogoi, you can start with the presentation. Hello, everyone. My name is Trinan Gogoi, and I'm, I'm the founder of Greenbus Society. We have started this campaign. I am Dihing Patkai. With, with my teammates, uh, students, professors of Digbo College. And now uh, I am Dihing Patkai. It's much beyond, much beyond than, uh, much beyond the protest slogan. It is, it is an emotion now. It is this related, the entire ecosystem is related. The love for the pain of the nature, the environment is related with this slogan, I am Dihing Patkai. I salute every environmentalist, social, uh, civil societies, student communities, celebrities, social workers who have raised their voice to preserve this purity of Dihing Patkai rainforest and opposing the grant of NWL grant of NWL to CIL. You must be uh, you, you you all must be aware that uh, India is the fifth largest. Uh, fifth largest uh, reserve of coal and the fourth largest producing uh, coal, coal producing country in the world. But 
not is written as merely negligible amount of coal, which is 0.31% of the whole country. And uh, if we don't extract it also, it will not affect the country's development. The biodiversity is more important for this area, this region. We have been working in this place since a very long time. In uh, in this along along this along along the way, we have learned we have learned and we have understood the real scenario. What is going on? What is the ground zero report? What is going on in this place? More than CIL, the main threat is for the coal mafias, the coal illegal rat hole mining, which is going on. There is no scientific, there is no science related. They directly do open cast. There is a way. You must you must know the entire process how it is happening. First, what happens? First, the entire timbers, timber timbers are big big. Uh, the, the, this this vegetation is uh, di dicorpus vegetation. Mm, uh, Holong trees, the state bird of, oh sorry, the state tree of Assam and Onachu Pradesh, Holong trees. These are, these are such a big, big trees, long, it's like 100 meters, big, big trees, 200, 300 years old. All these are first chopped, chopped up, first day is, they are chopped up, they, uh, the timber mafias first do it, and then the coal mafias come and dig it. There's an entire process. First, there's there's a group of person, a group of people, who are who are digging continuously, and then they carry it through cycle to the vehicle, uh, to a depot, where 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 four into four max pickup used to collect all of this, and then it they take it to the trucks. The entire process is going on under the nose of administration. Ironically. When you can see where the traffic rule is so recently, the, the new amendment of the traffic rule, everyone have to have high license, everyone have to have their registration number and all everything. But in that area, no registration, no license, nothing. You can just go around, pick up coal from just anywhere. And then CIL, CIL have also lodged many FIRs to the to the administration, but nothing has happened till now. Whereas in this amid corona lockdown, it is going on. That is one of the one of the shocking shocking thing. Amid corona virus lockdown, it is going on. The whole state is in curfew under after after six the whole state is in curfew but that place is, place is going on like a fish market you can go and you can just buy and you can do illegal coal mining there is many seekers the 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 area the people they all the they are they have been doing all this since a long time we are we are, we are saying for for a long time but when after this and nwl when this nwl granted this to granted granted this saliki is a forest to cil then only it came then then only these things come out in the in the in the picture before that we have been saying we have been saying we have been raising our voice we have been saying Please don't do it. We have been putting petitions. We have been putting all the things we can from our side. We have been publishing newspapers. But now it is a national issue. And now people should understand, people should know what is really going on. They should come and see. The entire area is affected. It's not like the only the place, the Saleki. The entire area is affected. Starting from the Onachir Pradesh, Namda fine everywhere from from till till here. Due to this, the indigenous tribe is mainly affecting is affecting the indigenous tribe. Once we met old lady, I, I asked her, oh, oh, 
what happened nowadays you don't come to market because those indigenous people they used to go to the forest they they collect some vegetables some broom uh, trees and all and they bring it to the market to sell it that that was their livelihood then i asked her what happened to you um, these days you don't come often so she told like all the mountains have been cut the so where will go everything is gone now what about the livelihood of those people now and the river system the drinking water system is also been polluted by this it is not about only coal mining deforestation is going on very vigorously everyone everyone have to understand it everyone to raise their voice because this is the last pristine zone this is last hotspot zone this last patches remaining entire area is already been encroached you can see you can see in google map if you go and check out the google map uh, the imaginary it is like everyone can see everyone can define it even a single, small boy can define it look this is the difference between these pictures so what is happening in in real sense the people the people have to come out and raise their voice to stop this there is a there is a big lobby which is going on a rat hole lobby due to this as we are walking here we know what is happening the adverse effect of it the adverse effect is effect it is like the human wildlife conflict is increasing day by day it is increasing day by day we have we have we we, we get every call we have we got many calls from the forest villages for villages some people is injured by leopard some animals is uh, some uh, some so elephant kill someone destroyed the property there there are now barren lands the lands before they used to farm now it is barren because of the conflict because of this elephants coming to their place that is 100% our fault that is not their fault people everyone every uh, all the villages get together and they used to push and they used to do go go back the elephants but no the elephants their place we are we are conquering their place we are invading their for for the land so that is happening every day human wildlife conflict is happening and if this continues to happen the adverse effect will be more on the because i i myself stay in a forest village my, the, the reserve forest is not more than 500 meters from my place the elephant reserve elephants used to come recently yesterday elephant is came and what what will happen if someone if all those 5 to 600 elephants come in our way to our villages what will happen to us think about us this is from this platform from this platform from this national platform i would raise this concern to all those who is watching right now anyway north is it's, it's always always been neglected you know mainly india never speaks of notice when the australian fires happened when the um, rf forest happened when the amazon uh, amazon amazon was burning everyone raised their voices has to save the amazon safe but what 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 is now happening to dehing patkai so i urge everyone to raise their voice use that hashtag i am dehing patkai and raise your voice this petition will not work everything this this court thing is at the last first of all we have to come together after that the court thing will go the court will ask who are the supporters who because in this place in the particular where there is happening no one will come forward i must tell you because everyone is getting their gains everyone is gaining there everyone is thinking about the short money not the money which is directly coming they are thinking about that they are not thinking about the future generation what is going to happen this future generation is at stake now we must do something right now otherwise the future generation will go in go in vain that's how i that that's that's i, I from this from this platform i would like i i'm saying i will send all all the footages all the all the things which are going on in a google uh, to to every one of you 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 just check on it you just find it and then you you just say the right thing the right 
everyone we have to come together otherwise this thing this is our heritage this place is our heritage it should be declared a world heritage site state tree state bird state flower everything everywhere that this biodiversity is so diverse when you will come you will know you will you 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 will be mesmerized but we we can't just let it happen we just can't let it happen school mining our there there are some points there are some things uh, there's three points we which we would like to um, i look put it first first stop coal mining stop coal, open cast coal mining that is the first thing we need to do second upgrade elephant reserve forest to wildlife sanctuary when when as as ranjit sir has told what is the legal legality of this reserve forest and wildlife sanctuary when we will make it when we will upgrade it when we will upgrade elephant reserve forest to wildlife sanctuary it will be protected under wildlife forest act that is 1972 and then number 3 we need proper utilization of funds in plantation restoration projects need to be done development of ecotourism livelihood wildlife conservation these are the things we need to do sustainable development we need to do right now there are many way to do development but not in the cost of environment thank you so much Uh, thank you so much Trinan Gogol that was a really insightful uh, message i would really i would request the uh, i would request all three of you to add like if you have anything to show like or uh, some footage or some videos or if you have any extra information that you want to add you can do so okay i guess uh, that is it so we have a lot of questions here so i would like to start uh, reading out some of the questions and i apologize beforehand for any questions that might have been left out so um, let us start looking at the questions and if any of the speakers want to uh, address those questions you can <laughs> we have one question other than online protest in the form of videos posts petitions and email what else can we do to save dehing barkai hello can i give yeah 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 short sure, and go go on yeah. yes um, we are uh, for this uh, we are, we are we are we are thinking we just came up with a came up with a challenge how the three challenge we are thinking about it and we will start it soon to to give awareness among the people first of all we need first of all they need to know what is amazon the piece subscribe so first of all okay so we thinking part guy you can follow us thinking part guy and our our page also give us society news foundation we are we are putting all these outputs in our social media and then you can raise awareness by doing hashtags and all this uh, these are the tools which you can use right now in this modern world we have to use that kind of tool uh without that without i must say we are, we have been raising this voice since 7 7 years 7 years we are unnoticed no one noticed us we was we were saying we were saying we we was giving paper presentation we have we are giving newspapers we have given to we have even letters to prime minister and all everywhere we have done from our side what we can we are doing but but when this thing happened and then when that hashtag i am dehing patka happened it went viral so and that point of time everybody came to new oh there is something there is a, there is a place called amazon the east okay we must save it so that is how we can do oh, it should be go national wise in the national level international level then only those people who are in that uh, the, the planners the government bodies they will think about it yes. okay so the next question is 
at a time when the world is moving away from coal and india is promising the same across conferences and summits over the past decade what makes the government justify such blatant misuse of power can i can i can i say something can i say something yes yeah, sure so go on so uh, the this is there is no justification you know for open cast mining especially now the open cast mining is a banned method you know almost you see in other parts of the world especially in developed countries uh there is another way we can go for underground mining so that is uh, one procedure and to continue this you know uh, I, i won't say it's a you know hesitation or whatever it may be but the sentiment is there you know and it is quite amazing during this lockdown period uh, lots of youngsters lots of people you know even the seniors and different organizations they have come up with the help of social media only right it's going on and it has reached up to the international level that is the most significant part of this uh, you know awareness i will i will rather call it awareness this is not a hesitation like you know this is awareness and this is very interesting so we have to be very focused our goal should be very focused my, there is one uh, suggestion from my side that is if we demand for the declaration of wildlife sanctuary the entire elephant reserve which is around 935 square kilometer if we demand if we unitedly demand to declare entire this region you know this rich biodiversity or the rich hotspot or the rich tropical rainforest if we go for the demand to be declared you know we have to give pressure you know wildlife to make it as a wildlife sanctuary then only this area can be saved from the other uh, damaging activities or the development this development should be there you know development uh, i'm not denying the fact that that development uh, we we are not for the development but that should be in a sustainable way and whatever damage is done done and whatever the coal seams and coal mines mining fields are preserved for mining that should be done in a scientific way and the scientific method is the underground mining not the open cast mining right if you can if you uh, and most of you have seen in the lidu margeta area you know that this is horrible you know entire landscape is gone and the people are suffering in fact they have different type of diseases over there if especially the lung infection and all right and the asthmatic uh, problem and the ground water pollution the surface running water pollution air pollution it is horrible if if you come to this part you know the lidu area or the coal mining fields near the coal mining fields they are all suffering and as well as the wildlife also no we are concerned about the human health also so if you preserve this area not only the human health of the of this region entire you know india will be benefited so my next uh, slogan i have yeah, yesterday night i have uh, decided uh, we should have one very important slogan that save being part of wildlife sanctuary to save the wildlife heritage of india that should be our you know one of the slogan we no need to go to the road you know to block to block the road whatever it may be we can do it from the home itself and this is the very significant part you know with the help of social media we are raising our voice so again i must tell you that I all already i have told you the importance of this field, you know this region the patkai region being patkai area for the uh, wildlife of india you know so if entire area and then belt is destroyed you know then there will be tremendous pressure on the indian wildlife the indian wildlife as a whole will be in a dangerous situation so slogan should be like this you know say being patkai to say the wildlife heritage of india that is my opinion you may not agree with it with me also right uh, so now i will give my uh, Phone to the person who has to say. Hey, Chotichot. There is a question. 
I think survey is already on the insertion. So we shall do some other analysis. Hello. Can you can you hear us? Hear us? Yeah. So there is another question. Can I go on? Um, so this is a long question. So if you want me to stop at any point of time, and if, if or if I'm going a bit fast, you can directly tell me so. So the question starts, uh, while we are all aware about the ecological threat concerning coal mining or coal exploration, have we undermined the business of coal mining in Assam? Assam coal has high sulfur content and low calorific value. The reason why the reason why coal mining is mined mostly illegal is because there is a demand for such cheap coal. Tea factories have benefited from coal. We have seen a boom of small tea growers in Assam, thanks to coal being available in such cheap price. Stopping illegal mining will also put these other business at the risk of shutting down. Also, can illegal coal mining be, respond, be possible without the knowledge of the local people? Tea gardens have also reduced Assam's forest areas. Do you not think that we need to attack the demand for coal rather than stopping the supply? The industries using coal should replace its energy source with natural gas. Only technological shift and energy fuel shift to electricity or natural gas can help stop the demand for coal mining. Who would like to answer that? Yes, yes, yes. Devashri sir, would you oh, like to answer that? Yes, yes. Uh, I am going through the question. Actually, it is a little bit big notice. That's why I am yes. losing the track. Do you yeah, want actually, me to regard, repeat it again? Yeah. No, I am going through the chat box. Uh, yes, regarding big brick lanes, uh, what I feel that nowadays there is another uh, type of brick that is made up of cement. It is coming up. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that is uh, one that, that can be one of the solution. Uh, because the demand for the cement brick it is coming up now uh, uh, that can be done in and uh, what can be what is the second question sir mm. and also illegal coal mining be possible without the, yes uh, what I know that most of the people here the local people are aware of the illegal coal mining because every night or every day we can see hundreds of trucks that uh, you know pass through our uh, highways. Everyone knows that. Uh, it, it is an open secret that illegal mining is taking place in Lido and that those those areas. But the question is that no one is uh, coming up to stop this illegal mining. That is one of the problems that we are facing. And regarding tea gardens, uh, yes, uh, it is not only now but from the uh, this one British era, we have seen that the forests have been diverted to give way for tea gardens. And uh, I think the government should, uh, uh, what the government can do is that they should not allow more forest area to be diverted for tea industry. I think whatever we have, because already we have lost a major portion of our forest. And I think it is the high time that we preserve what is left. We cannot further, uh, you know, destroy the forest because it is going to, destroy the entire ecosystem that we have here okay uh, that that i think and uh, yes technology better and better technology uh, technology is coming up we should give more focus towards renewable sources of energy and uh, whatever may be we should avoid uh, this one no? uh, non renewable source of energy even uh, i would say it is better to go for small hydro projects not big one big depths mm -hmm. because lately we have seen that uh, during this flood already a portion of uh, this uh, lower divang uh, lower swan city you know, uh, 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 this uh, landslide was there yeah that's why i feel whatever we do we should, it should be sustainable it should not impact the environment 
um, newer and newer technologies are coming up. We should use the, use that. Yes, investment will be more, but the impact on the environment will be the least. So I think uh, uh, we should avoid uh, using uh, uh, resources like coal mining. It is not at all, I think, uh, uh, beneficial for you us. Go for you can go for underground mining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If underground mining can be done, but I think we should we should completely avoid open cast mining. Because open cast mining is ruining the entire ecology of this area. The dense forest that I have uh, shown in the map, no? But if you go to the, because these are two years uh, old pictures, to uh, old maps. If you go now, then in most of the uh, reserve forest area also, if you go now, then most of the big, big trees, the commercially valuable trees are not available now. They have stopped off everything. And even in uh, during this lockdown, the, uh, the illegal uh, shopping of trees uh, was in full swing. This is the real fact uh, that we, the uh, people are witnessing every day. Thank you. I think, you know, we need to mount very strong pressure. You know, it's not only that, you know, there is this whole set of illegal coke oven plants, uh, which act as a, as a kind of, you know, uh, uh, a shield for many of the illegal activities there. Mm, yes. I don't think we need any of this polluting industry there. Uh, and uh, also, you know, there are a few other issues, you know, which, uh, which we need to address uh, so that, you know, uh, timber, timber mills. Just, yeah. Mainly, timber mills are like very many illegal timber mills are there in yeah. and around Natural and Assam. Many illegal, we have been saying, to when we will stop the mills, the illegal mills, then only the deforestation will come into a, a, a low pace. Yeah, so, and, uh, this is, uh, I think, the last breathing areas we have. Yes, yes. Sir. In India. Thank you so much. Thanks, sir. Thank Thanks, you sir. so much, sir. We will surely connect with you. Uh, there, is, there is one question. Just yesterday, Agatha Sangma has sent a letter to Environment Ministry. Do you think we need more such letters from MPs and MLAs and other public figures across the country? I think Trinay and Gogol can answer that. Yes, exactly. Uh, everyone should come out, raise their voice. More and more, when, when more and more people will join this cause, cause uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll definitely come to a come to a point where we can save this place. Otherwise, uh, if we remain shut and if we don't come, uh, as our PM say, vocal about the local. So we need to be vocal now. This is the time to become vocal. Otherwise, there's, there's merely a very small amount of time after that when the clear, uh, second to clearance will be given by NWLB they will start doing it again and the more, more, most importantly we need to stop that stop that open cut mining so when the celebrities the influencers will come up when when big personalities so when the civil societies will come up and say and i would like to request you from 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 this platform Please don't neglect Northeast. Northeast is a part of India. People don't know about Northeast. People have to know about it. We have we we have been facing this play, uh, this type of incident happened personally with us when we go there when we when we stay there. We 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 have been going through all this. So please come together. We are appealing the mainland India to join this cause. Like the way you talk about Amazon, please talk about, please share your views, please raise your voice about the Amazon of the East. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trinan Gogol. Our last question for the session is, what is the common notion among the locals? Because the elected government is also elected by the people. I think Trinan Gogol can answer that too. I, I have something to say, you know, on both these, you know, issues. Yeah, sure, go on. Uh, one is, you know, I'm glad that Agatha wants to make a statement. 
but i think uh, you know we have to be careful in such campaigns uh because you know they they have not made any strong statement on the illegal mining in meghalaya itself right and uh, because of those problems some of the problem in uh, dehing patkai has grown up because there is a demand for coal in bangladesh so uh people uh, we when people uh, we want like uh, like trinayan said we want more and more people's voices but uh, you know you should uh, as uh, people who are concerned and local people uh, you should uh, ensure that this is not hijacked as a political you know statement by somebody or you know uh, <clears throat> uh like uh, it has to it has to uh, result in you know stopping the illegal activities and uh, you know ensuring that it happens otherwise in many of the uh, issues uh, it then becomes a political debate rather than you know uh, in the last two years where i have been engaged very closely you know collecting information for my own case i have found that you know uh when uh, congress was ruling the people were saying you know it was the congress it was trying to do illegal activities now the bjp is uh, doing illegal activities so we have to steer clear of all that and say we we are here to ensure that you know this air, last of this uh tropical uh, forests are you no know, rain forests are going to be protected you know i would also like to add few things this is saleki is a small plot of land no only 98.57 hectares but there are three other proposals there waiting for sbwls uh, appro uh, approval one is in lekhapani uh, that is around 235 hectares there is also a, a proposal in uh, tipong for open cast mining that is 700 plus hectare there is another proposal Uh, that is of uh, 700 plus hectares in jagun area and all these areas are uh, tropical lowland prairie forest and if we uh, you know do open cast mining in those areas because already many research have already established that these are the places where you can find the endangered uh, western hog gibbon you can find the indian elephants it is the stronghold for the endangered Uh, white wing wood duck the state bird of assam and there are many other species as well as plant species like the holong uh, holong holong tree then there are many orchid species which are also endangered and are found in this part of the uh, country and if we keep on you know accepting proposals and giving the land or diverting this forest land for this type of activities then there will be a time when the entire ecology will be lost the entire ecology has to suffer Uh, we will have to suffer therefore i think we should uh, demand the government that no more open cast mining should be allowed in this area that is uh, first first uh, that should be the first demand secondly we want the entire elephant reserve thinking patka elephant reserve of 917 square kilometers should come under the protected area purview by declaring it as a uh, yeah, declaring it as a wildlife sanctuary uh, that is another demand And, and and i also urge other researchers too and uh, from my own state as well as from the neighboring state as well as other parts of the country that you can come here you can do research because this documentation is very less there are only few documentation that are available regarding the you know diversity of this area we uh, the local uh, researcher also are not that much active in doing researches regarding the biodiversity of this area these are i would say these are virgin areas and uh, basically researchers scientists environmentalists they can come here they can study the uh, avi fauna they can study the the mammalian diversity there is a very huge scope i think if we uh, keep on publishing more research paper then we can establish uh, in a scientific way that this particular forest is a treasure trove for the entire indian subcontinent we have to establish them the problem is that we have very few documentation regarding uh, there is another important uh, thing that this area is culturally also very rich culturally ethnic culture and their dehing patkai area is the eastern in fact eastern assam and the arunachal pradesh 
and the culturally it is linked also, uh, especially the Oriental culture. Okay, so the, we have diverse culture because of the diversity, or biodiversity, and I should say the biodiversity and the cultural diversity is two sides of a coin. You know, if there is biodiversity, then only the cultural diversity will survive, right? If the biodiversity is gone, the culture will also be perish. It will be finished. So that way, you know, we have to highlight that thing also, that culturally this area is very, nowadays, you know, the languages are in critical stage. We are in the world, you know, language, even some languages have become extinct. The culture, there is a diffusion of culture, right? Modernization is there, but the original culture, you know, ethnic culture, they should be preserved also. And to preserve the culture, we have to preserve the biodiversity of this region, otherwise, there will be no unique culture, ethnic culture, right? Unique food habit, unique dress pattern, unique way of life. This all related to the biodiversity. The entire oriental culture, if you see, it is related to the biodiversity, especially the South Asiatic part, you know? This is very important. That, that, that sentiment has to be there, you know? Along with the, you know, for the local people, you know? Along with the biodiversity, we are going to preserve your culture also, the cultural diversity also. That should be our, our motto also. Uh, that's all. Thank you, sir. So we are almost at the end of our meeting. For those whose queries uh, couldn't be answered, uh, you can uh, post them and we will get back to you with emails. And I hope our speakers have been able to uh, clear up all the queries or give you new insights or information to your issues or to your doubts. And uh, you can surely write to us if, uh, if you have any new ideas or if you want to share anything. So kindly follow our pages, News Foundations, Let India Breed. I am Dehi Patkai and uh, Greenbud Society on Instagram, Facebook, and all the social media handles like Twitter. So uh, we have posted the information on Dehi Patkai and we hope this will help us uh, to address your doubts in any way possible. Last but not the least, we would like to thank all of you for giving us your valuable time and for sharing some information with us. We hope that we have been able to instill the sense why illegal coal mining is so hazardous if it takes place in this part of the country. Because we can surely say that illegal coal mining in this part will prove to be a no-win situation for the environment and for the whole of mankind. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Take care and stay safe.